This is the scalar product or dot product of vectors. Uh, this video is kind of a revisit. I've done this before. Uh, let's take a look at two vectors in component form first. And here's our first little formula. If uh, there's two vectors, uh, u and v, uh, the dot product of those two vectors is going to be uh, the i components multiplied together plus uh, the j components multiplied together. And that's just going to give you a number. So uh, for example, if example, if u equals 2i plus 3j and v equals um, 4i minus, um, minus j, okay, uh, then u dot v will be equal to, need my little thingy here, u dot v will be equal to 2 times 4 plus 3 times negative 1 which is 8 plus negative 3, which is 5. Okay, there is our first sort of look at the dot product. We've done that before. Uh, there is another formula for the dot product that you should be familiar with. So here's our second formula for the dot product. Uh, the dot product of u and v is equal to the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cos theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. Um, if we put them uh, tail to tail, and we find that angle there. That's what theta is, the angle between the two vectors. Um, so what can we do with that formula? Well, as long as we have three of these items, we can find the fourth item. So if we know the dot product and u and v, we can find the angle between them. If we know the angle between them and two magnitudes, we can find the dot product. If we know the magnitude, the dot product, and one of them, sorry, the angle, the dot product, and one of the magnitudes, we can find the other magnitude. So, let's do an example. Let's take these two vectors, let's push them up here, and let's find the angle between them. So here's the question I'm asking myself. Find the angle between these two vectors. Now, I'm going to need the dot product. Ah, luckily, those are the two vectors. I already know the dot product. Uh, the dot product's 5. Now, I'm going to need the magnitude of the two vectors, uh, which I can find easily enough. Uh, the magnitude of u is going to be uh, 2 squared plus 3 squared square root. And the magnitude of uh, v is going to be um, 4 squared plus negative 1 squared square root. Um, and then all of those things, oh, it should be multiply, shouldn't it? Yeah, multiply. And then multiply that by cos theta, which is the thing I don't know. All right, um, I'm going to put that into my calculator, get some numbers for you. All right, so I've done my maths. Uh, root 13 times root 17 times cosine theta. Uh, now, I can rearrange this. So, uh, just put my equal sign in the middle. That's bad practice, but we'll do what we've got to do. Um, we do 5 divided by root 13 times root 17. Uh, that's like root 221, but whatever, uh, equals cos theta. And now I can just do the inverse uh, cos. So cos negative 1, bracket, all of that, 5 over root 13 times root 17 equals theta. Calculator, answer, I hope. So with my calculator in radians mode, sorry, in degrees mode, it's spitting out 70.34. And you might be wondering to yourself, well, is that right? Uh, I don't know, but we can probably figure it out. Vector u is uh, 2i plus 3j. So if I create that as a position vector, 2i, 3j. Uh, vector v is uh, 4i minus j. So 4i minus j. And then you just got to ask yourself, well, what's that angle there? Oh, is it about 70 degrees? Yeah, probably. Okay, I feel pretty good there. If you're not sort of doing a little bit of drawing to check your answer there, then you're kind of missing the trick. Um, okay, that's Formula 1, that's Formula 2, that's all the revisit stuff. There is a third version because now you know what polar form is. So Formula 3, if you see two vectors in polar form, uh, the dot product becomes really, really easy, right? Um, 
because I can say now that u dot v is equal to the magnitude of u um, times the magnitude of v times cosine of the angle between them. Uh, and from this, well, the magnitude of u in polar form, bing, I already know it. The magnitude of v in polar form, bing, I already know it. And the angle between the two vectors, well, that's just this one minus this one times cos this minus this. Um, now, would it matter if I did this minus this? No, it wouldn't, uh, because cos of 30 is equal to cos of negative 30. Uh, so it doesn't matter what order you, you subtract one from the other. Um, try to aim for like a positive answer. Uh, well, actually, no. Try to, try to aim for an answer between negative 180 and positive 180 for reasons I'm not going to get into right now. All right. Um, calculator. Actually, it's probably worth noting that you can do this without a calculator, just by the by. Uh, cos 30, you should know that uh, as root 3 on 2. Uh, so that's 20 times root 3 on 2, uh, which is 10 root 3, which is our answer. This could easily be done on a non-calculator style exam. Uh, all right, so I've given you one, two, three formulas. Uh, I need to clear all this off, and then I need to tell you about a few properties of the scalar product and the dot product. So here we go with the properties of dot product. Uh, first one is probably the most important one. If a dot b equals zero, then the two vectors are perpendicular. That means they have a 90 degree angle between them. Not hard to see why. Uh, if I've got two vectors that are perpendicular, that means the angle between them is 90 degrees. There's my two vectors. Uh, and if I put that into a vector formula, it would be a times b times cos of 90. Cos of 90 is zero. Zero times anything is going to be zero. That's why that works. Probably the second most important one, if a dot b equals the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, then they're parallel. Again, not hard to see why. Two parallel vectors. I can pick one up and put it right on top of the other one because it doesn't matter where we draw vectors. The angle between those two vectors is zero. And if I were to put that into my dot product formula, I'll get magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times cos um, 0. Cos of 0 is 1, so I get A times B times 1. So that's why that works. Uh, there is sort of a small tweak on that one. If A dot B equals negative magnitude of A times magnitude of B, then they're parallel, but they're parallel in opposite directions. If you're wondering why that is, uh, we can put it into its dot product formula again. Magnitude of A, magnitude of B, cos, and the angle between those two vectors, if I draw them like that, is 180, and that is negative 1. Negative 1 times those magnitudes, that's why that works. We're working in order of importance here, so 3 is A dot A equals the magnitude of A squared uh, not hard to see why A, the vector, is parallel with itself. Uh, and we already know that parallel vectors are just uh, the magnitude of themselves squared. Um, sorry, the magnitude of themselves just multiplied by each other. So in this case, that's the magnitude of A times the magnitude of A, which is A squared. Uh, neat, little, neat little thing there. A dot B equals B dot A. Uh, same like 5 times 2 equals 2 times 5. We call that being commutative. Uh, a, um, we say the scalar product is commutative. We can also say that it's distributive. That means that a dot b plus c is equal to a dot b plus a dot c. Uh, you've used the distributive law before with normal multiplication and numbers. Uh, we can do it with vectors as well using the scalar product. A little bit more sort of distributive action here. Uh, we have a number uh, or a scalar multiplied by the dot product of a and b. We could instead multiply the scalar by a and then do the dot product of ka dot b, or we could do a dot product uh, k times b. Uh, it doesn't really matter how we break that up. Uh, there are some important properties of the dot product. 
Uh, probably just the last one here real quick, just for completeness sake, uh, we can say that a dot product zero, a zero vector, a vector with no magnitude, is obviously going to be equal to zero. That's it. That's the scalar dot product of vectors revisited. There's a little bit of new stuff in there. There's some properties we probably haven't formalized yet. That's how you get it done.